Hello boys and girls, welcome to John Robson Guitar Tuition. I do hope you're well. Now then, today I thought I'd share with you a really cool little technique that I use all the time for writing chord sequences. Okay, this technique goes by many different names. I've heard it called pitch axis, um, modal interchange, parallel modes, all kinds of different things. And they all sound much more complicated than it actually is, to be honest. All you need to know are a couple of um, pretty fundamental relationships between chords that we're going to begin looking at now. Uh, starting with the 1-4-5 relationship, which is so called because the three chords that are in the 1-4-5 relationship are based upon the first, fourth and fifth notes of a scale. Here's a little bit more detail. OK, pick any fret, it doesn't really matter which at this stage, and play this bar chord shape. And we'll call this our 1 chord. Now to find where the 4 chord is in relationship to this 1 chord, simply stay at the same fret and move to this bar chord shape. So you now have your 1 and 4 chords. Where is the 5 chord? Well that's pretty simple too. All you've got to do is take that 4 chord shape and move it up 2 frets. So for example, if we started off at the 3rd fret, that would give us a G chord. Then moving to the 4 chord, it would take us to a C. So C is the 4 chord in relationship to G. And then if we move that C up 2 frets, it takes us to D. So D is the 5 chord in this little set of 3 chords. So starting from a G chord, your 1, 4 and 5 chords are G, C and D. And you can use this method to figure out the 1-4-5 relationship in any key. For example, if you started this whole process at the 8th fret, your 1 chord would be C, your 4 chord would be F, and your 5 chord would be G. And if you were to say start at the 10th fret, your 1 chord would be D, the 4 chord would be G, and the 5 chord would be A. So as long as you have a reasonably good working knowledge of bar chords, it's very, very easy to figure out the 1-4-5 relationship, as I say, in absolutely any key. OK, so now you know all about the 1-4-5 relationship between chords and how to find that on the neck of the guitar, it's time to look at the other fundamental chord relationship that we need for this technique. And this is the relative major, relative minor um, relationship. Um, without going into too much theory here, because frankly you don't need it, every major chord has a relative minor chord and every minor chord has a relative major chord. And here's a little clip that explains all about that relationship. Right, let's begin by looking at the chord of C major. Now all you've got to do is take this note and move it to here which will give us the chord of A minor. And for reasons that are a bit complicated and frankly not worth going into right now, A minor is what is known as the relative minor chord to C major. Or you can flip that around and say that C major is the relative major chord to A minor. And the relationship between these two chords becomes a little bit clearer if you view them both as bar chords. So here they are, the C major is up at the 8th fret, and the A minor is down at the 5th fret. So all you've got to do to find the relative minor for any major chord is move down 3 frets and turn it into a minor. And vice versa, it works the other way too. To find the relative major of any minor chord, move up 3 frets and turn it into a major. Simples! Right, so now you know the two fundamental relationships that are necessary to use this technique. And in this next clip, I'm going to show you how to use this information to vastly expand the number of chords that are available to you when you're writing a song. OK, if we take our one chord, G, 
that will give us a four chord of C and a five chord of D which is all well and good but let's suppose for a moment you want to add in some more chords where can you get them well the first thing you do is go back to the four chord which is C and now treat that as a one chord and look for the four and five chords in relationship to that which would be F and G next thing you do is go to the D chord which was the five chord in our original one four five sequence and now we treat that as a one chord and start looking for the four and five chords with respect to the D chord which are G and A and if we remove all of the chords which have been duplicated during this process then we find we have five major chords rather than the three we started off with and they are G C D F and A and let's not forget that each of these five major chords each has its own relative minor chord doubling the number of chords that we end up with these relative minor chords are E minor A minor B minor D minor and F sharp minor and hopefully you can see from this that if you begin with three chords that you know will fit together really well the G, the C and the D you can extrapolate from that to end up with ten chords that will fit together really well as you can see here I refer to this collection of chords as the G major universe so now it's up to you to go and figure out what chords are in any other universe the D major universe the F major universe, the C major universe, etc, etc. But for now, just to prove that all of this really does work, coming up next is a piece of music, a little chord sequence that I knocked together using all ten of these chords from the G major universe. And I think you'll agree that that works pretty well as a chord sequence. It goes on a few different uh, twists and turns and maybe goes off on a tangent in a couple of places, but it all hangs together pretty well. And the possibilities that you can uh, generate from this simple little technique, modal interchange, parallel modes, pitch axis, call it what you will, are pretty much infinite. I should also mention that what we just derived there as being the uh, the G major universe well G major has a relative minor doesn't it E minor that could also be thought of as the E minor universe so if you wanted to write something more centered around a uh, minor chord tonality uh, something with a bit of a darker minor chord sound to it then that would work just as, as successfully as you heard there Right, that's it for today folks. I hope you've enjoyed this little tip for writing chord sequences and if you've enjoyed this video then why not hit the subscribe button and you'll get to see more of them. Um, 
Also, if you live on Teesside in the northeast of England and you want some tailored one to one guitar tuition in any style, any level, beginner to advanced, then get in touch with me via the details at the, the end of this video. And your first lesson, by the way, is free. And whilst I'm here, I'll just take this uh, opportunity to give a little plug to my new album, which is out on Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, all the usual outlets. It's called The Whiskey Made Me Do It, and it's full of instrumental, catchy guitar tunes. I describe it as catchy tunes with flashy guitar. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, check it out. You will not be disappointed. Okay, folks, that's it for now. See you next time. Bye.